we now have enough background to be able to use the theory of stochastic processes to study cues or what is called queuing theory. Where do cues arise? So cues arise in a number of different contexts, but in all of them we have a server who's providing some kind of service. And to this server, we have the arrival of job requests or service requests. And we have the situation where not all service requests can be served right away. So imagine that you have a bank teller and the bank teller is providing service. And uh, however, when somebody comes for service, somebody else is already receiving service. In which case, they're going to have to wait in line, wait in a queue. And what we want to study really is how the queue evolves over time. Does it keep growing? Does it uh, sometimes uh, shrink? Does it expand? And we want to really understand uh, how we can manage the queues so that we don't have too many people in the queue. So it says the queue doesn't get too long, which essentially means choosing the number of tellers or equivalently choosing the service rate of the server such that we don't have too long a waiting time. So uh, queues arise in computer systems in many different contexts. For example, the arrival of packets into a switch, which then gets transferred to another switch, uh, may, uh, the packets may arrive when the switch is already busy. So in which case it'll be put into a queue and then eventually it'll be served from the queue. Similarly, if you're using a web server, then a uh, service request to the web server may be queued up before it re receives service from the web server. And again, we want to make sure that the service request doesn't take too long to get serviced. Or for example, if you think about phone calls arriving to in a, in a cell phone network, these calls are arriving to the, uh, to, the, to the system, and we want to make sure that we always have enough resources to be able to service the call. The kinds of things we're interested in when studying queues is, for example, the queuing delay. What is the typical time that it's taken waiting for service? We want to know the backlog, how many people are waiting for service. We want to know what fraction of time the server is busy. You know, are they idle most of the time, or do we have the server busy most of the time? Or the drop rate, which is the probability that when a service request arrives, there's no space in the queue, so you have to drop the packet or drop the service request. Uh, in, or in the case of a web server, we'll have an overloaded web server. So by studying queuing theory, we're able to understand these things. And all of these are predicated on the assumption that the arrival and service processes are both stochastic processes. So in other words, we don't exactly know when service requests will arrive, but we have some expectation, some distribution, and that distribution is captured precisely in the arrival process of a birth-death process where the arrival rate tells us how we transition from one state in the queue to another state in the queue based on the arrival rate. And similarly, we go from a state to a, to a lower numbered state when there's a service, and this service itself can also be stochastic, for example, described by an exponential distribution. So in these uh, uh, next few modules, we'll be looking at uh, queuing theory using the, uh, and study it using the uh, terms we've used so far from uh, stochastic processes, particularly birth death processes. And what we look at is the uh, classic Q called the MM1 Q, so where it stands for the uh, Q with Markov arrival processes or Poisson arrival processes, what are called Markov departure or uh, Poisson departure processes and one meaning there's one server. So I'll explain this a bit further, but before that I'll first talk about a very important uh, and fundamental rule called Little's Law. So we'll start with Little's Law, then I'll walk through the uh, analysis of the MM1 queue, and then we'll study some variants of MM1 queues. These are all single server queues, we just have a single queue, but we could have a situation where requests are served by one server and then they're served by subsequently by a second server and so on with a network of queues and I'll talk about what I call Jacksonian networks. So let's get started with uh, first studying Little's Law. 